Good evening, good evening. Wow, great to see you all. When, when George told me that he was kicking off OCP on a Monday instead of a Tuesday, I was like, great, let's get it started early. What he forgot to tell me was I was going to be the one standing between you and a happy hour. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it's just a privilege to be here. And the ideas that you're going to create here today are not just shaping your products. It's shaping the world's infrastructure. And Microsoft has been a part of this community now for almost a decade. And we've come here to share our stories, our innovations, our learnings. We, we started Azure as the, you know, building the world's computer. And when we made bold bets to make it the world's AI supercomputer. But as I was thinking about this talk today, we've entered a new chapter, a new phase, a phase in which we are now serving and deploying AI at unprecedented scale to our customers. And so I thought I'll share how we are going about it, how we had to go back to really first principles to re-engineer the entire stack from the system to the silicon, and how we are bringing those innovations and contributions back to the OCP community. But before I dive into the tech, I'm going to take you to the world of Formula One racing. Now, folks who have seen a Formula One race, they'll know that lap one is utter chaos. Cars are jostling, sparks could be flying, and there are people who want to write the headlines even before the first corner. But if you ask the team principal, here's what they'll say. They'll say races are not won by driving the fastest lap. Races are won by driving the hardest laps the fastest. And middle stints are hard. They require discipline and consistency. Right? It's not just about the raw speed, but it's strategy, endurance, execution. And that is where we are with AI today. Lab one has shown us what is possible. But now, as we scale AI infrastructure responsibly, quality, sustainability, security, as important as raw capability. And we are going to, Microsoft is going through an ambitious expansion plan. Just in our earnings call, we disclosed that we added two gigawatts of Azure capacity in just the preceding 12 months. And that was more than what Azure had three years ago. And at the heart of this expansion is our Fairwater AI optimized data center. It's a massive facility, 315 acres, 1.2 million square feet, and hundreds and thousands of GB200 connected over a highly optimized network. But the scale is beyond these GPUs. There are millions of compute cores, exabyte levels of storage, all re-architected for very high performance, high throughput, low latency for these GPU clusters. And you take this one AI data center, it's 10x the performance of a leading supercomputer. And we are building many of these. And we are also connecting them with an AI WAN that's optimized for building a big, scalable, and powerful machine. But as we make AI powerful, we have to make it practical which means it is the highest performance and scale at the lowest cost. We're optimizing across every layer of the stack from model efficiency down to the infrastructure. And just within two years alone, the cost of GPT-4 has come down by 93%. So as you step back and think about the printing press in the 15th century, it was not just advanced machinery. It really changed how we created, shared, and stored knowledge. It redefined the system of knowledge. And that's what's happening in AI today. It's redefining, re-architecting intelligence, whether it's the app agentic world or down to the infrastructure layer. And we have to go back to the first principle. We have to truly understand this workload, because only then can we design the system and the infrastructure beneath it. The first big change with AI systems is the increasing power densities and the move to liquid cooling. Now, Microsoft has been building 
purpose-built liquid-cooled data centers that are engineered for extreme high density for GPU clusters. They're also engineered for sustainability and reliability at the same time. For example, our next generation of data centers have state-of-the-art liquid cooling technologies to recirculate water in a closed loop configuration so there is zero water wastage. We also acknowledge that as we innovate and expand, we need to enable more flexibility, more late binding decisions, and more diversity of systems coming in. And for that, we do need common standards, common interfaces around power and cooling, because that is what's going to unify the ecosystem around data center infrastructure. So we are very proud to stand by this community and join the Open Data Center for AI initiative because we truly believe we can innovate, but also we can build these scalable, sustainable AI data centers for the future. Now, as we build liquid-cooled AI data centers, we know there is an opportunity for us to deploy AI systems in air-cooled data centers. And so we are really advancing our roadmap and introducing our second generation of heat exchanger units. These heat exchanger units they have doubled the cooling capacity, what we had just last year, and they integrate seamlessly into existing data center facilities so that we can expand our AI footprint. They're built with advanced components like pumps and fans, very modular. All critical components are hot swappable and redundant so that we can engineer these for high efficiency and resiliency for AI systems. We are excited to announce this in our OCB contributions very soon. Now, as we look at AI systems, we are redefining the power architecture in our data centers. Traditional power architectures will not keep up with AI systems, and we have to rethink all the way from the utility to the chip. So we are investing beyond conventional AC systems. We are investing in high-voltage DC distribution, solid-state transformers, as well as disaggregated power rack architecture. You've heard about Mount Diablo. It's a new class of power architecture. It's designed plus, plus minus 400 volt and 800 volt differential. And it can scale the IT gear to beyond a megawatt rack power. Now, this architecture minimizes the conversion losses, simplifies the distribution, and makes it more efficient. And Mount Diablo is OCP compliant. That means it's interoperable. You can put it in different data centers with different systems. Another new innovative technology is solid state transformers that can really help us rethink power architecture. Because what solid state transformers do, it takes medium voltage AC from the grid and directly convert it to high voltage DC. It uses wide band gap semiconductors with switching frequencies in 10 to 100 kilohertz. And that can really eliminate multiple power conversions inside the data center, simplifying the power chain, again, increasing efficiency. Now, solid state transformers can also interact with smart grids, and they can cut down space by about 60%. Another interesting thing that we observed in power architectures is that not only do they demand more power, but because of the synchronous nature of the workload, there are power spikes that are really hard to stabilize at scale. And this can cause underutilization, over-provisioning, and costs. So we took a full-stack approach to this problem, partnering with OpenAI and NVIDIA, and we really created pre- and post-stabilization techniques. We added rack-level energy buffers. We were able to do some predictive telemetry, adaptive firmware, and we were able to smoothen out these spikes. Our modeling shows that we can smoothen up to 40% of these spikes. And so I'm really excited to bring all of these innovations into the OCP community because I truly believe that we can build intelligent and power-aware AI infrastructure together. Now, we know that networks are the backbone of performance for AI systems. 
Now, just for context, the Fairwater Data Center has enough cable fiber that can wrap around the Earth four and a half times. And so as we move from cloud-centric workloads to AI workloads, the networking requirements are changing, and we have to redefine the networks for the future. For example, in a cloud workload, the jobs are quite independent. The bandwidth utilization is modest. There is higher tolerance to latency. And if a link fails, packets are just rerouted over standard protocols. But in AI systems, these are highly synchronous jobs. Right? Bandwidth utilization system keep the 90% to minimize congestion as well. Right? Tail latencies matter. And if a link fails, an entire job can slow down. So as we look at these requirements and design different kinds of networks, right, for scale up, we really want high performance, low latency, but also low power and higher reliability. As we move to scale out networks, we can connect multiple of these scale up networks and create a massive cluster inside a data center. But for that, we need networks to have path level resiliency, out of order packet delivery, and we need more telemetry to visibility into the network. And finally, we can connect multiple of these data centers and optimize it over an interregional AI van and make it one big, powerful supercomputer. And so we are taking all these advanced networking technologies and we are working through the consortiums like UAL and UEC. And today's announcement on Ethernet for scale-up networking is another great step forward. So again, we are excited with our partners to really contribute to Ethernet optimizations for the scale-up domain. And this is where we embrace the openness of ecosystem and then do co-innovation and collaboration. AI systems are also fundamentally changing how we think about system reliability. So imagine this, if one node goes down, an entire distributed job or AI system can fail. And our traditional, and this event, right, when, that, when this event happens, the blast radius of this event cannot be captured by the traditional reliability metrics that we have. So we have evolved our reliability metrics from you know, VM level uptime to AI job level resilience. This means now we can engineer systems that can bring up these nodes in hours, not days. And this is a completely new operational world for reliability, completely new, which means that we have to be able to take new approaches to fleet management. It really starts with firmware standardization. Our work through OCP collaborations, we are standardizing CPU, GPUs, and accelerator management frameworks, which means things like impactless firmware updates, advanced telemetry diagnostics, and unified RAS features. These things become critically important for operational excellence. They're important because it reduces integration complexity. It creates faster time to market for diverse systems. And most importantly, it makes the fleet reliable and secure across a diverse set of systems. Now, on the operations side, we are collecting billions of signals of telemetry from every imaginable component from the fleet. And we are creating real-time view of fleet health. Now, this really helps us because now we can build sophisticated and advanced systems for failure detection and prediction. We can combine known rule-based patterns for detection and machine learning models and predict anomalies that did not even happen before. So we know, as a society, history has shown that infrastructure is really what creates progress for humanity. It helps us connect, create, and grow. But history has also taught us an important lesson, that scaling without responsibility is fragile, and only when you scale with responsibility does it endure. And so as we scale AI infrastructure, 
our commitments to sustainability and security have to be deep and wide. Now, Microsoft has made a public goal that we will be carbon negative and water positive, and we'll be able to now create a sustainability industry across the entire industry. Now, this is backed up by investments, innovations, and transparent reporting. So for example, we are now contracting about 34 gigawatts of renewable energy across 24 countries. And our contributions at OCP are really helping shape the industry. We have led the embodied carbon disclosure. This is a clear and consistent framework for suppliers to report carbon emissions. It also helps customers make low carbon choices. We are contributing tools and methodologies, life, life cycle assessment. It is also measuring the impact of carbon, both for IT gear and data centers across the entire life cycle. And we are also now standardizing innovative technologies like heat reuse inside OCP so that we can efficiently use our energy as well as be able to meet regulatory requirements. On security, Microsoft has a deep commitment and a company-wide commitment through the Secure Futures Initiative. And this ensures that security is really embedded in every layer from silicon to the cloud. This initiative ensures that our systems are secure by design, by default, and in operations. Now, the OCP Calyptra workstream actually plays a very, very important role in this vision. And it's a hardware root of trust that we have all aligned with the industry. And today, we have uh, three announcements across Calyptra. Number one, we're announcing Calyptra 2.1, which really extends the root of trust across the entire security subsystem, including streaming boot. Uh, we're also announcing Adams Bridge 2.0, which is included inside Calyptra, and that extends our coverage for quantum resilient cryptographic algorithms. And then finally, we're announcing OCP Lock with our partners and storage vendors. And OCP Lock is really a very transparent and secure way to manage keys for self encrypting storage devices. So as I end my talk today, I just wanted to take a moment to reflect and say thank you. Because back in 2014, when we joined OCP, we were razor focused on really re-architecting the cloud server. Right? But as you can see from my talk today, our shared mission has expanded and grown. We're not just re-architecting the server, we're re-architecting the entire global infrastructure for computing for AI. And so I'm deeply grateful for this community and the collaboration and co-innovation that this community has done, and the spirit of openness that takes us forward. So thank you for being on this journey with us. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the conference. And yes, please do enjoy your happy hour. Thank you.